Before starting this video, I do want to give a thank you to my patrons that support the channel. And if you would like to support the channel, there are some great benefits for you in the link down below. So with that, let's get into today's video. Duck. 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 Goose. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pub Swamp MTG. So with this video, I'm going to go over the Goose Mother. This is just incredible. I just have to stop here just to show off. This is the best card I've seen out of this entire set. 10 out of 10. I love the Hydra aspect of the Goose and just the fact that it's the Goose Mother just honestly a chef's kiss. I love this card for what it does. Also on top of that, it's a pretty powerful card in Simic Colors. It does have an X cost. So what does it read? So it does have flying and it enters the battlefield with X11 counters on it. Obviously based off of the amount of X you put into it. Also on top of that, when the goose enters the battlefield, you create half X food tokens rounded up. Say for example, you had 10 paid into this, into that X ability, you'd get five food tokens on the battlefield. So it also does have another ability. It has whenever the goose mother attacks, you may sacrifice a food. If you do, you draw a card. So let me get this straight. The Goose Mother is putting eggs on the battlefield, or should I say food tokens on the battlefield, that are basically its eggs. Is it eating its own kin? I don't want to think about that too much, but this is some pretty good art. There's a lot of things going on with this Goose Hydra. However, what's pretty interesting about this uh, commander specifically is the fact that it kind of is pretty open-ended. However, the way I decided to go about it is by going with an artifact theme, especially in Simic Colors because you don't really see that. The biggest reason why I did think about that is because when it enters the battlefield, you are making food tokens and those food tokens are artifacts. So there's a lot of different ways we could just kind of go with the artifact theme and get some benefit out of that. So first let's discuss some of the food options you want to put in the deck because obviously this is a big food theme especially with attacking, drawing some cards with our goose mother. Of course we want to be making sure we have enough food to supply her so that she could give us some advantage by drawing cards. So with the new Lord of the Rings set we got tons of food support. For example the Shire, Revive the Shire, and Eleanor Gardener. Mainly because with the Shire you can tap an untapped creature you control, you create a food token. That's simple enough it's going to be providing us so much card advantage with our commander attacking. Revive the Shire will return a target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Just in case if you wanted to get an extra use out of a permanent you control you could take that from the graveyard put it into your hand and also make a food token so that's great use right there. Eleanor Gardener is pretty useful especially when it enters the battlefield you get to create a food token that's simple enough and at the beginning of your end step if you sacrifice the food this turn you may search your library for a basic land card and put that card onto the battlefield tapped then shuffle so let me get this straight you're going to be sacrificing food anyways with your commander and so you get some card draw and then with Eleanor you're also going to get some ramp too so Honestly, this is a beautiful combination just waiting to happen. We do also have more friends of the Shire in the deck like Mary Doc, Brandy Buck, and also Peregrine Took. They all have a great ability, especially Mary Doc. Whenever one or more halfling you control attack a player, create a food token. Also with Peregrine Took, it's probably one of the better of the bunch because if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus an additional food token are created instead. So no matter what, we're going to get extra food on the battlefield. And if we have enough food, we could sacrifice three foods and draw a card. So both of these are a great combination in together so that we could put more food on the battlefield for our big angry goose hydra. Also this is a big requirement for the deck either if you proxy it or if you get it in a pack or if you just want to get it yourself because of the art. You need to get the doubling season specifically the one with the goose in there. For obvious reasons it has the goose hydra in the art and our commander is a goose hydra so this is a match made in heaven. Plus it could be quite possibly one of the best cards in the deck. Honestly it seriously feels like they just matched this together with the goose hydra. They're like okay we must get this in there so they have to get both if they want to make that deck but your goose hydra will enter the battlefield with double of the 1-1 one -one counters and then you'll double the food tokens you put on the battlefield as well so honestly this is a slam dunk in the deck no question about it there are also many other token doublers that i put in the deck also some 1-1 one -one counter doublers as well so if you do want to go check that out the deck list is down below however i did want to move on to the other theme of the deck 
So in this deck, I wanted to make the most out of those food tokens that we put on the battlefield aside from drawing from them from our commander. So ways we could do that is by having Jahira, Friend of the Forest, and also Urza, Lord High Ar Artificer on the battlefield. Both of these provide that extra boost of mana, especially with Jahira. Tokens you control have tap, add green mana. And with Urza, Lord High Artificer, it has that ability, tap an untapped artifact you control, add a blue mana. So again, not only is our food tokens going to be drawing cards for us, also on top of that, if we do have one of these on the battlefield, we could actually tap them for mana as well, so that's pretty great use overall. Also not to mention that Urza does have a pretty busted ability by paying 5 into it, but I'm not going to get to that in this video. But if we do have a lot of food tokens on the battlefield, we can have affinity for artifacts with specific cards like Thought Monitor, for example. A lot of cards like this with affinity is absolutely perfect in the deck. This could possibly just be reduced to one blue mana if we have enough food tokens on the battlefield. It does have flying and when it enters the battlefield, it draws two cards. That is mainly an example though. There's a lot of different ways we could have different cards with affinity so that we could cheat stuff out. I did also want to bring your attention to one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with Kappa Cannoneer. I want to say it's probably Leonardo. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up as I go. It does have Improvise. You could tap Artifacts to pay for its cost. It does have Ward 4 and whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control you put a 1-1 counter on Kappa Cannoneer and it can't be blocked this turn. So for example, if you have this on the battlefield and you play your Goose Hydra for 10, 5 artifacts will enter the battlefield and you'll put 5 one, one counters on this and it can't be blocked this turn. So this is pretty insane, especially for the value you do get. Speaking of value, why not have Shimmer Dragon in the deck for 6 mana? It does have flying and as long as you control 4 more artifacts, it has hexproof. Also you could tap 2 untapped artifacts you control and draw a card. Say for example you have about 4 artifacts on the battlefield, you could just tap 2 of them and then draw 2 cards. And and then later on you could attack with your Goose Hydra to sacrifice one of those food tokens. So you're going to be drawing three cards basically in that turn if you have both of these on the battlefield. So I would say Shimmer Dragon is a great include in the deck for its versatility of drawing cards. Also on top of that I did want to mention Tough Cookie because of course we are in a food deck. I wanted to bring up Tough Cookie mainly because... It's just a fun thing to do, especially because it's a food itself. We could sacrifice it to our commander if we wanted to. Also, if we do have some food lying around on the battlefield, we could animate one of them to become a 4-4 artifact. And if we do have a couple mana lying around, we could do that to the same with multiple food tokens. Also, on top of that, it is a food, so you could sacrifice it and gain 3 life if you need to. So I will say if you are in the late game and if you have some extra mana lying around and some extra food tokens on the battlefield, you can just animate them and start beating face to opponents. Speaking of animating food tokens, I do want to show you a way to win the game. This is probably something that's probably not super optimal, but something that I thought about and I felt like it's enough to mention on a video. Again, it's pretty janky. I mean, it shows some CDH combos, but however, it's not what you really think of it. I mean, it's pretty deadly nonetheless, but I'm just going to show it to you. So what you will be using in this combo is using Food Chain and also Mist Hollow Griffin. This is one of my favorite combos in the entire game. Essentially, you sacrifice Mist Hollow Griffin to Food Chain, you net 5 mana of any one color, then you can cast Mist Hollow Griffin from Exile to play it onto the battlefield with a Food Chain mana, netting 1 mana each time to gain infinite mana of 2 cast creatures. With that, you essentially have infinite mana that you could cast your commander with. But let's just say for math reasons, you put 20,000 power on your commander entering the battlefield. You will put 10,000 food tokens on the battlefield as well. So you have a very huge Goose Hydra on the battlefield as well as a bunch of food tokens on the battlefield. How do I win? Well, what you could do is have Concordant Crossroads on the battlefield. All creatures have haste, so your commander. And if you have ways to animate your food tokens like having Rise and Shine and also Cyber Drive Awakener, I personally like Cyber Drive Awakener a little better because other artifact creatures you control have flying and when it enters the battlefield until end of turn, each non-creature artifact you control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. So all those food tokens that you put on the battlefield, they become 4-4s four, and have flying and also haste with the concurrent crossroads. I know it's a little bit of a Christmas Wonderland theme, but honestly, if you can pull it off, congratulations to you. It's something that I'm going to try doing if I do build this deck. So with all that said, thank you guys so much for coming by and watching this video on the Goose Mother. I feel like this is a very fun commander. I mean, I don't know why I find this so fascinating, 
Let me know down below in the comments, do you plan on making the Goose Mother? I mean, if you did come to this video, you probably looked for inspiration or you just like my videos. Hopefully you like my videos too. I mean, aside from it absolutely looking ridiculous, it's a pretty powerful commander if you have a lot of mana to put into it. It does have flying, so it does have that evasion. So there's a lot of ways where this could honestly end games by itself if it's big enough. Also on top of that, having that ability to draw cards and also make food tokens when it enters the battlefield is pretty critical because that's what you really want most in a commander is the ability to draw. And also on top of that, having food tokens on the battlefield is nothing to joke about either because we have ways to abuse them. So with that said, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And if you don't, the Goose Hydra will come after you. Anyways, thank you for stomping by.